be the destroyer of worries. One of the great goals in life is to achieve peace of mind. The reason why very few people have peace of mind is that they don't see it as a goal important enough. Even if they do, they often do not take the time to understand what is getting in the way between them and their peace of mind. We already talked about one of the main obstacles, or let's say pairs of obstacles, negative habit patterns, fear of failure, moral rejection, and these steal a huge amount of peace from us mentally. Also, we talked about feelings of guilt, feelings of inadaptability, lack of merit, and not feeling deserving, all of which can steal our peace. In this session, I want to talk about the last key to this discussion of negative emotions, negative imagination, negative imagination. The term negative imagination comes from an extensive body of literature written at the beginning of the century. Negative imagination is something we believe in ourselves, which at the same time causes us an enormous amount of stress and despair. Negative imagination creates fear and a good definition of fear is fantasy experiences that these are experiences that we create in our minds and imaginations. And as we dwell on them, they become more and more real. For instance, if children watch a scary movie, they might start to believe there are monstrous creatures under their beds or in their bed or in their bedrooms. These are fantasy experiences that become real in their minds. We can call this negative imagination. In the context of this discussion, I'll translate it as worry. Worry is a sustained form of fear caused by indecision. Worry is a sustained form of fear caused by indecision. That means when we make decisions, we get rid of the concern. A few years ago, a study was conducted where many people were studied and asked what they were concerned about at that time. The answers revealed what people worry about. 40 of the concerns that people had were for things that never happened. They realized that things they were never worried about, like being late, losing their jobs, or not functioning well in a relationship with a concern. The next figure, 30, were things that had happened in the past, things that had already passed and nothing could be done about them. About 12 of concerns were related to health, in most cases, unnecessary worries. They thought they had pain, illness, suffering, or something. More than 10 of the statements did not turn out to be true. Things they worried about were trivial, such as having enough change for a parking meter or whether someone would call. Only eight of the concerns were for something substantial and of that 80 hair for four were completely out of the person's. They were worried about things like Red China invading North Vietnam and similar events. The person could do basically nothing. Research shows that almost 90 sec of everything that worries us or more is irrelevant and never happens. It's not worth worrying about. Where does the concern come from? It comes from a worry mentality. If you were raised in a family where your mother or father were worriers, you might become one too. Children often want to be like their parents because they are the most important people in their world. Even four or five year old children can be very worried. And when their parents sit together and worry, even though there is nothing to worry about, these are experiences of fantasy that become real. Our job is to eliminate worry, and I'm going to give you two or three simple ideas you can use. Number one, which is one of the most popular of all, is simply living one day at a time. Live one day at a time. Don't worry about what might happen tomorrow. Don't worry about what may happen in a year or six months. Just do the best you can. Now there is a beautiful phrase from Teddy Roosevelt. He said something that meant, do what you can wherever you are with what you have and don't worry about the rest. Do what you can wherever you are with what you have and don't worry about the rest. The key number two to deal with worries and I have a huge number of challenges facing my life and business is to get to the reach the facts, not the apparent facts, not the quick facts not the facts that seem obvious, but understand the real facts. Take the time to examine a situation and discover what is the real truth of it. I have discovered that most of the concern evaporates if there are enough facts. If you hear that someone has done something or you hear about a change in your business, your personal life or a change in one of your relationships, call that person and discover from the source 
the answer is correct, and often you will discover that the facts eliminate the concern. Most people who worry are the ones who prefer worrying to taking the time to ask and find out what happens exactly. Ask, research, read, do your homework, and get the facts. One of the most important requirements, certainly for your success in business or in any other field, is to get the facts you need so your answers are accurate and up to date. The third method is called the destructor of worries. The destroyer of worries is an expression that was invented by one of our graduates who said that this expression literally saved his business and preserved his mental health. It's one of the simplest techniques, I swear, in dynamite. It consists of four steps. Step number where, if you have something on your mind, define it clearly in writing, sit down, take the time to write it and describe what you're worried about. Get down and write it down. Write, I'm concerned about this and describe the situation exactly as you see it. In medicine, it said that an exact diagnosis is equivalent to 50 of the exact diagnosis defined clearly in writing is 50 of the cure. An important point here is that sometimes when you seem to have an overwhelming problem, it has more than one problem. It has a situation called a swarm. We have one, two, three, four problems together. Yes, clearly defined in writing. You can write them down. One, two, three, four. There are several little problems together that sometimes worry you, and if you eliminate one of those difficulties, the rest evaporates. Or sometimes a problem in a group of problems is the key and the rest becomes irrelevant. Be alert to that and definitely write it down. Number two is once you've clearly defined this, determine the worst possible outcome. Determine the worst possible outcome. In other words, ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen as a result of that situation? Think carefully. If the worst happens, what could it be? Determine the worst possible outcome. Something interesting happens here. We discovered that worry does not come from the event we are worried or stressed about. It's not the event itself that worries us. It's the anticipation of that event and the resistance we put up psychologically, wishing, waiting, praying that the event does not occur. Yes, when we determine what the worst possible outcome may be and specify it in writing, we discover something remarkable. The worry did, it seems to evaporate as soon as we define the worst possible outcome. Stress comes from not wanting to face what could happen. We'll talk about this later, but it's a psychological phenomenon denial. We deny it. We don't want to face it. If you have an investment and every day it's getting worse, tell yourself the worst thing that could happen with this investment is that I could lose everything. Once you say I could lose everything, Suddenly, you're not worried anymore because you know what could happen. The third step, to go back to it for a second, is regarding a relationship. Sometimes, we are in a very unhappy relationship. We say, what is the worst that could happen here? The worst that could happen is that you lose the relationship. The relationship disappears. You must ask yourself, will that kill me? Will I die from losing my investment? Will I die when I lose my job? Will it kill me to lose the relationship? The answer, of course, one can recover from almost anything. Number three, by the way, there are many people who have and present the signs of cancer, but they don't go to the doctor because they want to avoid the stress of not knowing. Yet this stress exasperates the course of the disease. Finally, when they have to go to the doctor, it has progressed so far that the doctor can't save them, but the Stress of not facing the possibility keeps them away from the doctor at the moment when it could help. Uh, number three, prepare to accept the worst in case it happens. It is not being passive. It is not being fatalistic. Just say, if nothing can be done and this must happen, I have to accept it. And I have a saying that I use a loss. What cannot be cured must be endured. Well, if this comes to pass, I accept it and learn to live with it. I'm not going to let that tear me apart, nor will I let it kill me. But number four, immediately begin to improve. When the worst comes to pass, you have accepted that it could happen, and you've decided that you will live with it if it happens. Now you will do everything possible to work and ensure that it does not happen. It's called the Minimax Analysis of Regrets, which is aimed at minimizing the maximum regret. In other words, it involves considering the worst thing that can happen and finding ways to minimize the maximum regret. 
The Minimax technique is tremendously effective because it clears your mind considerably. One of the best ways to use it efficiently is to take a piece of paper, draw a line in the center and label the top margin. Then on the left side, write BATIDP, in no forgiveness. On this side, provide a, a clear definition of what is bothering you. On the right side, write PDP, worst possible outcome, and then describe what you're worried about. Write it down clearly. You'll find that most of the problem or stress disappears each time you do this. Not all, but most. Now, as a final point regarding this idea of worry and negative imagination, what is the antidote to worry? It's a digging the art purpose. The only antidote to worry is to act with a purpose. Everything that leads to a point where you can act with a clear purpose, where you can move with determination, will help eliminate worry. As Shakespeare said, if you use arms against a sea of problems, do it, and you will end them. Anything that guides you to act firmly and with a purpose will eradicate worry. This is because of what we call the law of substitution. When you are thinking about a problem or situation and you are actively taking purposeful actions to solve it, there is no room for worry. Worry mostly creeps in when you have too much idle time on your hands. It's a form of negative goal setting. Remember that we are talking about the law of concentration. It says that what you sow, you will harvest. So when you have a situation that worries you, you end up doing what you are found doing. You think, speak, and vividly imagine exactly what you don't want. The law of expectation says that what is expected will come to your life. What I feared most has come to pass as the law mentions in the book of Job. The law of attraction says it will attract into your life the people and circumstances that align with your dominant thoughts. The reason we have a complete module to talk about concerns is that some people don't care about anything. By the way, the method to determine the worst possible outcome presented by the destroyer of worries is also a tremendous technique for making decisions when you find yourself in a situation and you must make a decision one way or the other. The first question that should be asked when you have analyzed it is, what's the worst thing that could happen? I remember a great pragmatist who years ago was one of the richest men in the world. He said that this method of determining the worst possible outcome is what he used as a method for making decisions in all businesses he undertook. In everything he embarked on, he would wonder, what's the worst that can happen and make sure that he could handle the worst outcome. So make the decision now to eliminate the worry. These fantastic experiences that seem real, accept the worst possible outcome that may occur, and then get busy doing everything humanly possible to take a constructive attitude to eliminate the worrying situation and discard it. This is the key to eliminating the worst of our negative emotions. A person carries with them success or failure, and it doesn't depend.